Today's lesson is called 2 plus 1 equals 3 with math, but not with God. If you didn't figure out what this lesson is about, it's about the Trinity. The Trinity is one of the things that's been highly mistaught in the Bible. They teach that there's three in the Godhead. And that teaching is totally against the Bible. You can almost read the start of any epistle, and it will tell you. We're going to read one of them. But we're going to go through a few things. You all pretty much know about the Trinity. But there might be a few things that you didn't look at this particular way. So I'm Brother Stephan up here, and I'm giving you my angle. Anytime a brother gets up here and deals with the Word of God, it's like setting a subject on a round table and asking all the brothers, what do you see? We all see the same thing, but we see it somewhat differently. Somebody building something in there? <laughs> this is the Sabbath. You got to give it a rest. But today we're going to look at, at this thing and we're going to see the deception. And we're going to show, show you clearly that there can be no Trinity in the Bible. We're going to show you who the third one is perceived to be. So we're going to put this all together right now. Let's go to 1 John 5th chapter and look at this point of contention. 1 John 5th chapter. And this is where one of the places where they get the doctrine of the Trinity from. And I do agree. You do see three here. But I don't see three gods here. But we're going to show you these three in other places also. First John, fifth chapter, and verse seven. Go ahead, Brother Fajel. For there are three that bear record in heaven. Uh-huh. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. Now, these three bear record where? In heaven. The Father, the Word of God, and the Holy Ghost. We know what the Father, he's up in heaven, sitting on his throne. The Christ is sitting next to him. But the Holy Ghost, where is he at? Is he sitting down? Let's move on. Let's go to 2 Corinthians, the first chapter. So we've established three at this point right now. We're early in the game, so those that are, that are pro-Trinity don't get excited. We're going to deal with this. and Let's break it down and look at it. 2 Corinthians 1st chapter. 2 Corinthians 1st chapter. And let's pick it up at verse 2. 2 Corinthians 1st chapter and verse 2. Go ahead, Fajal. Grace be to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Go ahead. Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. So we know that God is the Father, right? But it said grace and peace from God our Father and from Jesus Christ and from the Holy Ghost. You mean the Holy Ghost ain't got no grace and peace? He ain't got nothing to say about this? Why is he left out the equation all of a sudden? Because he doesn't have any grace and peace to give to you of his own accord. But read on. Read that three again. Blessed be God. 
even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, uh -huh. the Father of mercy and the God of all comfort. So we also know the Holy Ghost as the comforter, right? But he can't give you no comfort until it comes from the Father, who is the God of all com comfort. It starts with him. Mm -hmm. But let's move on. Let's go to 2 Peter, the first chapter. 2 Peter, the first chapter. Because we got to collect all these things and put them on the table. I'm trying not to do a whole lot of talking right off, right off the bat. I'll get warmed up. Yes, to give you folks a little hope. They like to hear me talk. Brenda. <laughs> Second Peter, first chapter. And let's pick it up at verse one. Second Peter one and one. Go ahead. Simon Peter, a servant and an apostle of Jesus Christ. To them that have obtained like precious faith with us. Lots like faith. We all are on the same page. We all are right here with this faith. Believing. We all should be. But we all need to read the book. So let's obtain this like faith. Go ahead. Through the righteousness of God and our Savior Jesus Christ. How many you see? Two. Go ahead. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. Why is the Holy Ghost being left out of this grace and peace continuously? How come our Christian brothers and sisters don't see this? Because they've been taught deception to their own hurt. But we want to clear it up. We're not against them. We actually pro for them because we want to clear this thing up this is our job this is love is to show you this thing let's move on let's skip down to verse 20 verse 20 the same chapter go ahead knowing this first that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation this is not my opinion we all read this that it was two right and we are going to continue to read this. So this is not a private interpret we, uh, interpretation. We're going to read this. Go ahead, 21. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man. Uh-huh. But holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. So they did not do this on their own accord. And I, and I will also tell you, in the New Testament, it was the same thing. They didn't do this on their own accord. They were moved to do this. But let's move on. We got to go look way back and let's look at some things. Let's go to Revelation, the 12th chapter. Revelation, the 12th chapter. We got to look at where this deception got to start at. Revelation 12, we're going to pick this up at verse 3. Revelations 12 and verse 3. Go ahead. And there appeared another wonder in heaven. And behold, a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his head. Now this seven heads and ten horns, this is the whole Gentile kingdom. The whole Gentile uh, uh, rulership. From beginning all the way to the end. Go ahead. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven. He said, now his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven. Can I have figure two put up there for me? A third part of the stars of heaven. Now the book tells you there is an innumerable number of angels. We need to understand this. Okay, and I just want to throw you some figures up here just for points of reference. Light, the speed of light is 1,000, I'm sorry, 186,282 miles per second. It travels 6 trillion miles in a year. 
Now, the known universe is 13.7 billion light years big. Now, these are two numbers. These are two big numbers. But if we multiply those two big numbers, it's 13.7 billion times 6 trillion. This is the number that we get. Can y'all tell me what that number is? You can't tell me what it is, and I'm not going to tell you I know either. <laughs> but there are numbers that are way larger than this, going to the hundreds of numbers, but they are known numbers. The Lord said there is an innumerable number of angels. I just want to put this up here as a point of reference so that you can see this. And a third of that Satan took off. Keep that number in mind. Skip down to verse numbers. Huh? Finish that. Yeah. But matter of fact, just skip down to verse seven because it says that his third, his tail drew a third part of the stars of heaven, and you can put T A L E also because it was a lie. He took a third part of the angels with him also with that lie. Skip down to verse 7. Go ahead. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. And the dragon fought in his angels. Uh-huh. Skip down to verse 9. We got to find out why is Satan fighting against Michael and his angels. All these group of angels fighting. Why? Go ahead. And the great dragon was cast out. That old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth. And his angels were cast out with him. Now I said, with this war, Michael and his angels, they won. Michael and the two-thirds of the angels, they cast out Satan and the other third. And they cast him down to the earth. But it said that these devils deceive the whole earth. Every single one of you all have been deceived at some point in your life. All of us have been deceived at some point in our life. And without reading this book, you will continually be deceived. But let's go to Isaiah, the 14th chapter. We need to find out more about this. Isaiah 14. Isaiah 14. And we're going to pick this up at verse 12. Isaiah 14 and verse 12. We got to find out why was he kicked out? Was he doing good deeds in heaven? What? Inquiring minds want to know. Verse 12. Go ahead, Jim. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer? How are you cast down from heaven, O Lucifer? This is... What, his, what Satan's name used to be. He used to be the messenger of God. He used to be the Holy Ghost. Go ahead. Son of the morning, how art thou cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nation? And we just got confirmation because it said the whole world has been deceived. Those are the nations. Go ahead. For well, thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. Wait a minute. You said in your heart, I will ascend to heaven. I'm going back up there. Go ahead. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. Uh-huh. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. Go ahead. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. He said, I will be like the most high. This is where he got in trouble at. Because he wanted to be like God. But let's move on. Let's go to Ezekiel the 28th chapter. Now, if we look at Jude, Jude 6th chapter, it tells you that the angels which kept not their first estate, 
they, are, uh, they left their habitation. And they are reserved in everlasting chains of darkness. Because when Satan lied to Adam and Eve, the Lord took his power away to appear. He can't appear. Nor, uh, him nor any of the devils. They can't appear. So they are kept in chains of darkness. So he can't be seen. But he can influence people. This is the deception. So he has to do things through people. First verse, Ezekiel 28 and verse 1. Ezekiel 28 and verse 1. And we're going to look at the prince of Tyrus. Go ahead. The word of the Lord came again unto me, saying, Son of man, say unto the prince of Tyre, Thus said the Lord God, Because thine heart is lifted up, uh -huh. and thou hast said, I am... A God, I sit in the seat of God, in the midst of the sea. Yet thou art a man, and not God, though thou set thine heart as the heart of God. Doesn't it sound familiar? He said, you a man. But because Satan has been kept under chains of darkness, he can't appear and do it himself. He has to work through people. He has to do things vicariously. He has to experience things through other people. This prince of Tyrus has set his, set his heart, or set his mind as the heart of God. There's a man on the earth that thinks he's God. The organization makes him to be God. Uh, be God. It's Papa over there. One of his titles is Vicarious Philly Die, which is Vicar of Christ which is the replacement for Christ on earth. So his thoughts are according to Satan. Because Satan came. He got him so that he's trying his best to be. So this man has set him, his heart as the heart of God. Go ahead. Behold, thou art wiser than Daniel. Uh -huh. There is no secret that they can hide from thee. Uh -huh. With thy wisdom and with thine understanding, thou hast gotten thee riches and has gotten gold and silver into thy treasure. Which is the riches of the richest organization on the earth? I ain't going to say it, but y'all said it. Go ahead. By thy great wisdom and by thy traffic hast thou increased thy riches, and thine heart is lifted up because of thy riches. Uh -huh. Therefore thus saith the Lord God, because thou hast set thine heart as the heart of God. He said, because you set your heart as the heart of God, the Lord got something for him. But let's skip over to verse 12, because we just finished reading about the Prince of Tyres. So somebody, he's doing somebody else's bidding. He's the prince. The man is the prince. But we're going to look at the king, the one who's controlling the prince, the one who got his hand in his back or in his mind. Go ahead. Verse 12. Son of man, take up a lamentation upon the king of Tyre and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord God, thou sealest up the sun, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. This king of Tyre is perfect. In beauty. Go ahead. Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. Wait a minute. This king of Tyrus has been in the garden of God. He's been in the garden of Eden. So you know he's not a man. And that he's perfect in beauty. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Who are we talking about here? Every precious stone was thy covering. Uh -huh. The sardis, topaz, and the diamond. The beryl, the onyx, and the jasper, uh -huh. the sapphire, the emerald, and the carbuncle, and gold. The workmanship of thy tabrets and of thy pipes were prepared in thee in the day that thou was created. Go ahead. Thou art the anointed cherub you, that covered. You are the anointed cherub that covered. What is a cherub? It is an angel. He is the anointed cherub that covered God. He was right next to him. 
He was the messenger of God. God told him something. Go ahead and let them angels know what's going on. He go wherever in heaven to tell them. But let's see what he did. Go ahead. And I have set thee so. Thou was upon the holy mountain of God. Thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. You know about all the good stuff. Go ahead. Thou was perfect in thy ways from the day that thou was created. Uh huh. Till iniquity was found in thee. You were straight till iniquity was found in thee. What happened? Go ahead. By the multitude of thy merchandise, they have filled the midst of thee with violence. You got a little bit too big headed, mister. You started merchandise. You started advertising you. You started advertising God. You got beside yourself. You got too big. God got small all of a sudden. Go ahead. And thou hast seen. Therefore I will cast thee as profane out of the mountain of God. Uh -huh. And I will destroy thee, O covering sheriff, from the midst of the stones of fire. Uh -huh. Thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. He said your heart was lifted up because of your beauty. You were perfect. He was beautiful. With four faces. And six wings. Eyes all over your body. Cow's feet. God said that's beautiful. I got to go with that. <laughs> with my spiritual eye. <laughs> but my physical eye. I can't see it. <laughs> and y'all couldn't either. Matter of fact, if we saw it, we'd be running. That's right. That's what I, uh, Joel 41 said. If you saw this cat, you'd die. But we see the Lord cast him out. And he said he's going to lay him, cast him to the ground. Did you finish that? No, middle of 17. Go ahead. Thou hast corrupted thy wisdom by reason of thy bright. So by your wisdom... By what you know, you have corrupted yourself. Just like being a false prophet. Go ahead. I will cast thee to the ground. I will lay thee before kings that they may behold thee. This is where he's going to end up. They're going to be looking at him. But let's move on. Let's go to Psalms, the eighth chapter. Because we need to find a point. Why is this cat? Doing us like he's doing us. He's cast down to the ground. And every chance. He's trying to destroy us. Psalms 8 chapter. Psalms 8. And let's pick it up. At verse 1. Psalms 8 and verse 1. Psalms 8 and verse 1. Go ahead. O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth, who has set thy glory above the heavens. Uh -huh. Out of the mouth of babes and sucklings hast thou ordained strength. He said, out of the mouth of babes and sucklings hast thou ordained strength. Go ahead. Because of thine enemy, that thou mightest steal the enemy and the event. You got it. You're doing this so that you can shut the enemy's mouth up. But who is this enemy and avenger? We just finished reading about. It. But go ahead. When I consider thy heavens, the work of thy finger. Now hold on, David is David. This is this obviously David. The, 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 he started thinking about this at nighttime. He said, I, 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 "I'm considering the heavens." The works of your fingers, the moon and the stars. He didn't say the sun, did he? He said the moon and the stars which thou hast what ordained. Go ahead. What is man that thou art mindful of him? And the son of man that thou visitest him? Go ahead. For thou hast made him a little lower than the angels. 
and has crowned him with glory and honor. Uh -huh. Thou madest him to have dominion over the works of thy hand. Go ahead. Thou hast put all things under his feet. He said, thou hast put all things under his feet. Everything is supposed to be under our feet. What else? Go ahead. All sheep and oxen. We know about that now because that's the Lord gave man dominion over the earth. Did he not? We have dominion. We run things on the earth. But he said all things, didn't he? He listed the moon, the stars, the sun, all that constellations, galaxies. All these things are supposed to be under our feet. Let's move on. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 11 chapter. 1 Corinthians 11 chapter. And let's take a look at this. Maybe you might see what I see. Now, I don't want you to, uh, uh, to forget what we're dealing with. We're dealing with the Trinity. And the Holy Ghost. The argument is, one of the arguments that we deal with, the Holy Ghost is God. That's what they say. 1 Corinthians 11 chapter, and let's start at verse 1. Go ahead, Fajil. Be ye followers of me, uh -huh. even as I also am of Christ. He said, I'm following Jesus, so be like me. Go ahead. Now I praise you, brethren, that you remember me in all things uh -huh. and keep the ordinances as I delivered them to you. Uh -huh. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ. The head of every man is Christ, is Jesus. Go ahead. And the head of the woman is the man. And the head of the woman is the man. Go ahead. And the head of Christ is is God. And the head of Christ is God. Would you put that figure, uh, figure four up there for me? Figure number four. Look at that. At the top of the ladder is the Father. Below him is Jesus. Below him is man. Below him is the woman. Now, I may be wrong. But there's two obvious things that's missing here. Two obvious things that's missing here. I don't see angels. And I don't see the Holy Ghost. Do you see the Holy Ghost in here? If the Holy Ghost was going to be in this equation, he should be between, be between the Father and the Son. Because he can't be between Christ and man. Let me put it like this. Christ and man and woman. Man and woman is the body of Christ. Man and woman is the wife. Would you put a servant between you and your wife, guys? Would you put a servant to be over your wife? Would you? No, you would not. God made man to be over all the works of his hands. He's over all angels. So can I have that, uh, I lost my place. Can I have figure number, is that what it is? No, I want figure number, hmm, lost my place again. Figure number, the one that got the, uh, the population of the angels, or the, the reference number, with that 822, seven rows of zero. Now the world population, is roughly, at this time, about 8 billion people. It's 7 billion plus some change. And that number up there is a reference, just a number that we're dealing with. 
Because we know the number of angels is innumerable. If you look at the numbers now, seeing that man is over all the works of God's hands, he's over all these guys up here. All within. How many of us? About 8 billion? Over them? To me, I see a point of contention. I can't see it here in the book. But the book tell you Satan is a murderer. And he's been like that. He's been trying to kill us from day one. And I'm going to leave it at that. Let's go to Hebrews, the second chapter. So we see in that equation from the father, the son, man, and woman, there's no room for the angels in between there or the Holy Ghost. Well, actually, the Holy Ghost is in there because he's under everybody. He's an angel. And we're going to show you that. Let's go to Hebrews, the second chapter. Hebrews 2, we'll pick it up at verse 5. Hebrews 2 and verse 5. Go ahead. For unto the angels have he not put in subjection the world to come, whereof we speak. So they don't have anything coming in the world to come. Go ahead. But one in a certain place testified, saying, What is man that thou art mindful of him? Or the son of man that thou visitest him. We read this. Go ahead. Thou madest him a little lower than the angels. Thou crownest him with glory and honor. And didst set him over the works of thy hand. Go ahead. Thou hast put all things in subjection under his feet. Uh-huh. For in that he put all in subjection under him, he left nothing that is not put under him. Go ahead. But now we see not yet all things put under him. So... All that is going to be put under us, we don't see it yet. We're not ready for it yet. We're physically or mentally not ready for it. So this is something to give you incentive to keep walking. To keep doing this thing. But let's jump over, uh, go back to chapter 1 and pick it up at verse 5. Hebrews 1 and verse 5. Go ahead. For unto which of the angels saith he at any time, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. And again, I will be to him a father, and he shall be to me a son. Uh huh. And again, when he bringeth in the first begotten into the world, he saith, And let all the angels of God worship him. Go ahead. That's, that is... Every single one of them. Let all of them worship him. Go ahead. And of the angels he said, who maketh his angels spirits and his ministers a flame of fire. He said he maketh his angels spirits. Go ahead. But unto the son he said. I'm sorry, that's good. Skip over to verse 14. Verse 14, go ahead. Are they not all ministering spirits? Every single angel is a ministering spirit. That's what he's saying here. Go ahead. Sent forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation. And this is what they're sent for. To help us out get this salvation. But let's move on. Let's go to St. John the 14th chapter. St. John 14. We know now that angels are spirits. St. John 14, we're going to pick this up at verse 26. St. John 14 and verse 26. Go ahead. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost. So we know the Holy Ghost and the Comforter are the same thing, but... Let me ask you this. It said the Holy Ghost, but you call him the Comforter. What, he lost his holiness? No, he didn't. So let's put Holy Comforter there. The Holy Ghost is the Holy Comforter. Go ahead. Whom the Father will send in my name, 
He shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. That's good. Let's go over to St. John 15 and verse 26. We're talking about the same guy. If he's holy this, he's holy that. Verse 26, go ahead. But when the comforter is Which come, is the holy comforter, go ahead. Whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the spirit of truth. Now this is the same guy. Is he holy being the spirit of truth too? Yes, he is. Because he's bringing you the word. He's holy. Go ahead. Which proceeded from the Father, he shall testify of me. He's going to testify of me. So you got this same man, you, he got, or this same being, he got three titles. The Holy Ghost, the Holy Comforter, and he's the Holy Spirit of truth. We can remove that of truth and make him just the Holy Spirit. Same thing. But let's move on. Let's go to the next chapter, St. John 16. And this is talking about him again. St. John 16 and verse 13. 16 and 13. Go ahead. How be it when he, the spirit of truth is come, he will guide you into all truth. Uh -huh. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. And uh -huh. he will show you things to come. So he's going to tell you what he has heard. He's not going to freelance. He's not going to sell himself like his predecessor did. He's going to tell you only what he heard. Go ahead. He shall glorify me, uh -huh. for he shall receive of mine. He's going to receive of mine. Go ahead. And shall show it unto you. Go ahead. All things that the Father has are mine. All things that the Father has is mine. Go ahead. Therefore said I that he shall take of mine and shall show it unto you. And he's going to take of mine and show it unto you. How many do you see here? No, you don't. You see three. All things that the Father has is mine. And he, talking about the spirit of truth, is going to take of mine. You just saw it in 1 John 5th chapter. Think about it. But let's move on. We're going to show it to you someplace else. But let's move on. We finished that 15. Yeah. Let's go to Exodus the 23rd chapter. Because we're going to follow him down. Well, that's a little tedious. It may take you a little time today. You know, this is the Sabbath day. Y'all ain't supposed to be doing nothing. Y'all got, you know, y'all got about 20 minutes today. Some of y'all be wanting to run out of here like you want to go run and play the lottery or something. They don't show the lottery till what, nine o'clock? What time is it now? About one o'clock? Y'all got about eight hours. Heck, I can kill, I can kill eight out of hours up here. Y'all want to go for it? Yeah. Y'all can really see how long I can talk then. It'd be the last time I'll be up here then. <laughs> Exodus 23. But relax, we got a little bit of time. I ain't going to beat you up too, too bad. Let's put it like this. We'll complete the lesson. So here we're taking a look at, 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 the, at Israel when they were in the wilderness. And the Lord is telling Moses, I'm going to send somebody here to deal with you all. Take care. He's going to get you. To where you got to go. Verse 20. Exodus 23 and verse 20. 
And this is what the Lord said. Remember what we just finished reading in Hebrews. Angels are spirits. Go ahead. Behold, I send an angel before thee to keep thee in the way and to bring thee into the place which I have prepared. Uh huh. Beware of him and obey his voice. Provoke him not, for he would not pardon your transgression, for my name is in him. So this one is a different angel. The Lord's name is in him. And he's not going to pardon your transgression. He's got authority. He got power. You better watch him. Go ahead. But if thou shalt indeed obey his voice and do all that I speak, then I will be an enemy unto thine enemies and an adversary unto thine adversary. Go ahead. For mine angels shall go before thee. Wait a minute. He said, mine angel. This is not a regular angel. This one has personal on it. This is the Lord's personal angel here. He said, mine angel. Go ahead. And bring thee in unto the Amorites and the Hittites and the Perizzites and the Canaanites, the Hivites and the Jebusites, and I will cut them off. He's going to get all them ites out of here. <laughs> Isaiah 63. And let's look at the same scenario. Isaiah 63 in another place. Them ites were kind of rough. No matter, and, <laughs> no matter where they were at, they had to be gotten rid of. Isaiah 63 and verse 7. And this is what Isaiah wrote about this. Verse 7. Go ahead, Mr. Jill. I will mention the loving kindnesses of the Lord and the praises of the Lord uh -huh. according to all that the Lord had bestowed on us and the great goodness toward the house of Israel which he had bestowed on them according to his mercy. Uh -huh. And according to the multitude of his loving kindness. Skip down to verse 9. Verse 9. Go ahead. In all their affliction, he was afflicted. So he suffered with them too. When they were sorrowful, he was sorrowful. Because he was among them. Go ahead. And the angel of his presence now saved we know, them. We know that an angel is a spirit. And it just told you. That this angel that was with him, it was the Lord's angel. Because it said mine. Now I just told you it was the angel of his presence. This angel had his name. But he represented the Lord. If you saw him, it was just like the Lord was there. The angel of his presence. Go ahead. In his love and in his pity, he redeemed them. And he bared them. And carry them all the days of old. Go ahead. But they rebelled and vexed his Holy Spirit. They rebelled and they vexed his Holy Spirit. But we know a spirit is an angel. This is not somebody else that just came in. It is the same being. Just called him different names. As it did, they called the Holy Ghost. They called him the Comforter. They called him the spirit of truth. They called him just the angel. Then it was mine angel or how we said his angel. Just different names. Same being just doing what he's supposed to do. Let's move on. Let's go to Luke the first chapter. All you have to do is follow the scripture down. Sometimes it gets a little tedious, but the reward to all this work is knowledge. Now, y'all want to want to run out of out of here early, considering that I said that y'all don't want to get no knowledge. Go ahead and run.
Let me remind you. This is what you're here for. Knowledge. Knowledge how to get salvation. This is what you're here for. Let me reel you back in. Luke, the first chapter, and we're going to pick this up at verse 5. We're going to look at Zacharias with John the Baptist's dad. He's doing his job, getting ready to light some incense. We're going to pick it up at verse 5, but we got to read you a little bit about him and his wife. Verse 5. Go ahead. There was in the days of Herod, the king of Judea, a certain priest named Zacharias uh -huh. of the course of Abiah, and his wife was of the daughters of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. Uh -huh. And they were both righteous before God, walking in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord blameless. Go ahead. And they had no child, because that Elizabeth was barren. Mm -hmm. And they both were now well stricken in years. Uh, so they were, they were both elderly, pretty elderly, but they had no child. She was barren. Go ahead. And it came to pass, that while he executed the priest's office before God in the order of his course. Uh -huh. This is what happened. Skip down to verse 11. So while he's doing his course or doing his job, go ahead. And there appeared unto him an angel of the Lord standing on the right side of the altar of incense. Uh -huh. And when Zacharias saw him, he was troubled and fear fell upon him. Oh, like, oh, shoot, what I'm doing now. Go ahead. But the angel said unto him. Fear not, Zacharias, for thy prayer is heard, and thy wife Elizabeth shall bear thee a son. Uh-huh. Uh, skip down. Go ahead. What, what did he say? What did he finish? Finish that. And thou shalt call his name John. You're going to call him John. Skip down to verse 18. So this is what Zacharias said to the angel. And Zacharias said unto the angel, Whereby shall I know this? Uh-huh. For I am an old man. And my wife well stricken in years. So Zechariah says to Angel, how are we going to know this, man? We, me, me and my wife, we both old. We prayed pray this prayer maybe like about 30, 40 years ago. And you just getting, getting to us? You can forget about this. We too old to have kids. How are we going to run after this youngster? <laughs> That's a good one. I, I don't want to know the, the answer to that question. But he said, we both old. But what did the angel say? Go ahead. And the angel answering said unto him, uh -huh. I am Gabriel that stand in the presence of God. He said, I am Gabriel that stand in the presence of God. You doubting me? I stand in the presence of God. This is, he didn't say one of the angels that stand. He said, I am Gabriel that stand in the presence of God. He's the same one that we saw in Isaiah 63. He's the same one that was back there in Exodus, the 23rd chapter. You, you forget these angels are very old, but they don't get tired. They don't age. They don't get hungry. Their strength doesn't diminish if they don't eat. And they don't die. He said, I stand in the presence of God. I also call this angel a Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. I'm sorry. But this is the same thing that we just saw in St. John 14 and 26, 15 and 26, 16 and 13 through 15. We just saw him. His name was just different. But he does the same thing. And did you hear him talk about himself? No. He didn't tell you all that he was other than just here. He told you what he was. He is able to stand in the presence of God. Just to verify. The information that he gave. Thank you for tuning in to today's lesson. If you are in the Chicagoland area, we welcome you to join our church community every Saturday at 12 noon central. 
We are located in Riverdale, Illinois at 520 West 138th Street. Our ministry is made possible by your donations. To make a donation or to view all of our locations across the world, please visit our website at www.theisraelofgod.com.